remembers Crash Twin Sanity. So there's something new I want to do with this series. Towards the end of the videos, I actually kind of want to like go through, show you guys the case and the manual if I have it. However, I know most people are just here for the gameplay, so we're going to start with that. However, if you're interested in seeing the complete and box experience, well then stick around till the end of the video. From the moment that I decided to start this series, I knew that Crash Twin Sanity was going to be the first ones that I made a video on. I beat this game so many times as a kid, and I actually just replayed it last year. So here we are, we got the opening cutscene. I'll just let it play out for a minute just so you guys can kind of get an idea for the story that's going on here. So if you don't know who the characters are, the girl that you just saw chasing the butterfly, that is Crash Bandicoot's sister, Coco. She's the one that just got zapped. And then the person hovering over her is Cortex. And then this is our main man right here. Crash, Crash, where are you, big brother? There's something weird going on in the bay. Come see. So that is Neo Cortex pretending to be our main character, Crash Bandicoot's sister. And if you don't know Crash Bandicoot, he's known for not exactly being the sharpest tool in the shed, we'll say. Now this game had one heck of a development cycle. We're not gonna get into it here because there's many people that have made videos on that that have explained it much better than I ever could. But this game went through a lot of different versions, revisions, it had multiple different titles. In fact, the final title for the game, Crash Twin Sanity, that was just like a last minute thing that they came up with. It basically came down to them having to sit a couple devs down in the room and then they came up with a couple of names and they were like you aren't leaving this room <laughs> until you come up with the actual title for this game because for the entirety of the development cycle they weren't able to settle on one then just like in any other crash game you break these crates and you get the boy aku aku seeing cortex dressed up as coco is honestly cursed this game is honestly very underrated compared to the other crash games at least in my opinion you know when most people think about their favorite crash games they think crash one two three wrath of cortex you know that one's a little bit more divisive but when it comes to crash twin sanity man there is not enough people that defend this game or stick up for this game or just talk about it in the first place. It is such a good game. Now, one thing worth noting, I'm going to be quiet so you guys are able to hear it, but just listen very closely to the soundtrack and, you know, there's something you might notice about it. It doesn't exactly sound like instruments, does it? And you would be correct for thinking that because the soundtrack in this game is actually entirely a cappella. And normally, you know, acapella music i don't have anything against it necessarily but when it comes to video game osts you know i would prefer especially in a crash game for it to be real instruments however for this game the acapella actually works very well. In fact, I am glad that it's acapella. It fits the theme of the game very well. There is actually some OSTs that come later in the game towards the latter half that are genuinely some of my favorite soundtracks from the Crash series, just period. It's easy! All too easy. <laughs> I seriously wonder what game devs are thinking when they create some of the stuff that they do sometimes. Like, who sat there and thought, hey, what if at the beginning of the game, Cortex zaps Coco, cosplays at her, and tricks Crash to follow him. I mean, don't get me wrong, it's absolutely hilarious and I love it, but it's just like, what, what, who, who was thinking of this? I've heard a lot of people go back and forth on this game. Some people absolutely love it, and some aren't so hot on it. Me, personally, I've loved it since the first time that I played it when I was a little kid. And for a while, you know, I was wondering, maybe it's rose-tinted glasses, maybe it's just nostalgia getting the better of me. I need to replay it and see if it's actually as good as I thought. And again, I just replayed it last year, and now that I'm a fully grown adult, my brain is fully developed, I can look at this game in a vacuum for what it is. And honestly, it's an absolutely amazing game, and I love it just as much as I did as a kid. One thing worth noting is that we were playing on the PS2 version, so for you guys, you know, the video probably still at least looks somewhat good running at a 480p image. I mainly just chose this because this was the console that that I played this game on as a kid. However, I do have an original Xbox now, so technically I could have bought that version so we could have had like a better looking version of the game for me to play and to play for the video. Just for authenticity's sake, for when I played it for the first time and for the sake of my nostalgia, I chose to go with the PS2 version. However, if you're a video game collector and you like to have the best looking possible versions of games. Hey, 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 yeah, you. I've been doing this for 10 stinking years. Back and forward, back and forward, and I'm sick of it. Well, I'm not gonna do it no more! <laughs> if you were wondering, yes, that skunk, he just broke the fourth wall. <laughs> But yes, that skunk was actually directly talking to the player. I've always loved that cutscene. It is, it is absolutely hilarious. Anyway, as I was saying, the Xbox version is technically the best looking version of the game in terms of like resolution and everything like that. And here's the big reveal. Surprise it was actually Cortex. Crash. Like the fleas in your fur, I keep coming back. This game was very animated Three too. Three years I spent alone in the frozen Antarctic wastes. And I missed you. And so I've organized a little gathering, like a birthday oh party, except the exact opposite. It's actually making me cry and a little look, bit. I feel so nostalgic watching this. All of your friends are here. 
You are so very popular. <laughs> the polar bear. Handing out the presents. For anybody that doesn't understand the polar bear reference, polar bear is there because in Crash Bandicoot 2, there's like this on rails level, or there's multiple on rails levels where you have to ride a polar bear around the level. And obviously with that, many players died many, many times riding that polar bear. So, you know, it, the polar bear may rightfully be out for revenge. <laughs> Again, though, even though the Xbox version is technically the best looking version of this game, I always go with PlayStation just because, I mean, it's Crash Bandicoot. Crash Bandicoot just feels at home on a PlayStation system. I mean, I know technically Microsoft is trying to buy Activision right now, which would technically mean that they own Crash Bandicoot, which is funny because Crash Bandicoot has always been like a Sony mascot, a Sony IP, but now it's going to be owned by Microsoft. So that'll definitely be kind of interesting to see play out. But for what it's worth, Crash Bandicoot is always best played on a PlayStation, in my opinion. I even played the most recent entry, Crash Bandicoot 4, It's About Time, on my PS4, just because I'm that dedicated to playing Crash games on PlayStation systems. Now one last ball to shoot back at him, and then we launch into the second phase of the boss fight. Meet your brand new, hydraulically operated, twin brother, Mecha Bandicoot! Dude, this is so freaking cool. Initiate missile attack. It's so cool. I, I love this boss. Even though it's like relatively simple and it's not too hard to dodge his moves, it's just... I, I, it's just... It's, it's so good, man. Can you guys hear the vibration? Like I said, it's a pretty simple fight. You just dodge his moves, he shoots some rockets, hits you with the saw. Well, we already got a saw off, but then you, you know... Hit back the green things to him when he shoots them at you, and then that's really that, really. Then he does it again. Shoot it at me. Hit it back at him. Come on, shoot another one. Don't miss. And then he does one last big one. Real big charge up. He's shaking. And Mega Bandicoot down. Gosh, they don't make games like this anymore, man. And then this launches us into the second level of the game. <laughs> and then we're stuck, just kind of rolling down this long winding tunnel as we're like beating the crap out of each other. I know it's kind of hard to identify like what's going on because it's a little dark right now, but this is actually Crash and Cortex like beating the crap out of each other. So if, if you stay still, they have like idle animations, like Crash will get Cortex in an arm lock and then Cortex will like spin around and start spanking Crash. Let's see if we can actually get it. Yeah, <laughs> you can see here Cortex starts spanking Crash. Again, one of my favorite things about this game is just how animated it is. Like in the cutscene and the gameplay. Oh no, I missed the gem. But in the cutscenes and the gameplay, it's very animated. It almost feels like you're playing through like not necessarily a Pixar movie because this game is a little dark at times, a little too dark by Pixar standards, I'd say. But you know, maybe more like a DreamWorks movie. I just love how animated it is. This game also has a tendency to break the fourth wall, and I absolutely love when they do it because they don't do it in an outright way all the time. I mean, at the beginning they kind of did it with the skunk, like that was very direct. However, there's some that are a little not as obvious later on. Like there's a part where Cortex Cortex says, well, the Wrath of Cortex didn't sell as well as we thought it would. And that was a reference to their previous game, which, you know, wasn't received very well. And that's actually the only Crash Bandicoot game that I have never played, that being the Wrath of Cortex. That was the first Crash game to be released on the PS2 and the original Xbox. And I just, I never got around to playing it. I do actually really want to play the game. And I've been keeping my eyes peeled on like eBay and Macari for decent listings. And the game doesn't go for too much nowadays. It goes for like 10 to $15. So I could easily get it whenever I want to. I'm just kind of holding off for that steal of a deal where I find for like five dollars cib manual and everything included mint condition disc there was a lot of complaints about that game you know floaty controls really bizarre i don't even know if i should call it an art style it wasn't even really an art style it was just like them making the characters look different unnecessarily so and it didn't exactly look the best there was also like a lack of boss variety in that game from what i understand like most of the bosses were basically just crunch bandicoot the game still has its dedicated fans though so it's definitely one that i plan to check out for anybody that may be interested in picking up of Cortex if you haven't played it before if this is your first time hearing about it if you're getting it on a PS2 just keep in mind even though normally when I'm collecting PS2 games I like to get the black label ones like this where it's a black label right at the top and you know it's just it, it looks clean in the collection for Wrath of Cortex in particular you do not want to get the black label make sure you get greatest hits and again as a collector I try to stay away from greatest hits just because it kind of muddies up the collection and I like having just like a nice line of black label games however 
the original black label has some issues with loading it takes a really long time to load the game however the greatest hits version actually fixed that so again just keep that in mind if you're getting it on ps2 however if you're getting it on literally any other console or if you're emulating it on pc you'll be fine to go with the other editions just keep that in mind stay away from the ps2 black label like the plague but you're the greatest hits version on ps2 will be fine and just in case anybody needs a refresher the greatest hits are the ones with the red label on the top and the spine one annoying thing about this game is that if you fail you can't skip the cutscenes because one of the ways that they masked loading screens in this game was behind the cutscenes so if you get saved you know if you get it stuck into a loop or you're dying a lot or you're struggling you're you're gonna be stuck watching a lot of cutscenes thankfully this game isn't like a brutal gauntlet you're not gonna be struggling the entire time so it's not like you're gonna be stuck watching cutscenes over and over and it's gonna be like some huge hindrance especially since most of the cutscenes in this game aren't really that long they're no more than like 30 seconds so really just think of it as you're sitting through a load screen except instead of it just being a normal loading screen it's uh well it's a short cutscene taking its place so it's not that that bad if i'm gonna be honest there's really only one instance where i can think that it got kind of annoying there was like this one level later in the game that i'm not gonna spoil i got kind of stuck on it for a bit i'm not gonna lie when i did a replay last year i ended up dying a solid like i don't know maybe eight ten times something like that and yeah i got a little annoying seeing the same cutscene over and over again but that's like the one instance i can think of otherwise yeah this game is severely underrated and if you haven't played it before i highly recommend it it is so good from front to back there's no level or part in this game that I would honestly dread to go through again if I were to replay it like the whole game from front to back was just like a really fun cartoony experience I don't know it, it's just it's a lot of fun ah, keep back you weak-minded fool avert your gaze or you'll go crystal crazy <laughs> Now we gotta spin into Cortex and grab the crystal. Now from here we get into some really interesting platforming sections, but again, I don't want to spoil any of that just in case you guys haven't played the game before. So this is where we're gonna wrap up the gameplay section and move on to the review and overlook of like the game, the case, the manuals, and you know, different sets that the game came with. And for anyone curious, this game isn't too expensive. You can probably get a copy on eBay for, I don't know, maybe no more than 15 bucks for Xbox and probably, I don't know, like eight or 10 bucks for PS2. It's really not that expensive. And just in case anybody decides that they want to see more Crash to Insanity, I'm gonna I'm making a dedicated save file just in case anybody would ever want us to return to this one Now I know my lighting situation isn't exactly the best So I'm gonna do my best to kind of like show it off to you guys Maybe maybe like block my face a little bit this is the cover art of the game. I, I hate how much the light is reflecting off of it. I think I'm going to need to get like a dedicated camera, or like a dedicated setup to show this off to you guys. I'll sit over here so that I'm right next to the mic. If you look at the back here, it says they're working together, but they don't have to like it. Then you got a bunch of images and stuff from the game. It shows off some of the exclusive features here. How do I, how do I get, maybe if I turn off my TV. There we go. That got rid of some of the glare. But as you can see, four playable characters, including Nina Cortex, the bionic goth girl. Playing as her was actually a lot of fun. She has like this cool grapple hook mechanic that you're able to mess around with. She has dedicated levels you're able to zip through you know I again I don't want to spoil too much of it but those were definitely some of the highlights of the game that was a lot of fun it's like an entirely different moveset down here it says check out the wicked team moves in this game where freaking crash is like skating going cortex incredibly powerful bosses will challenge our dysfunctional heroes and it shows the one that we just fought that being mecha bandicoot and it shows off some of the moves you got the twin slam the humilla skate the spank the twin throw and we got the roller brawl and then down there it just says censored under the rating label which I think is hilarious wait a minute this game was rated E for cartoon violence. I'm surprised that this wasn't like an E10+. There was honestly a lot of like really edgy humor in this game. I'm surprised that this got away with an E rating. I forgot to read this paragraph at the top too. It says, Faced with an evil force which is threatening their island home, Crash Bandicoot and Dr. Neo Cortex are forced to work together in the funniest Crash adventure ever. Control the squabbling duo through innovative team moves as they wax, max, spin, throw, and ride their way through a fully 3D free roaming environment. I know this all probably comes off as rather nerdy, but you know, I'm really into video game collecting, retro video games, video game preservation, the whole shebang just video games period i love them and especially when it comes to like physical media there's just something about having the case and reading and seeing all the fun stuff on the back and the covers and i don't know it's just I, there, there's something about it just it makes me really happy unfortunately though this game did not come with a manual because this specific version of crash bandicoot that i got as you can see at the bottom there it says part of a set now there was a lot of games that did this during the ps2 generation where they come as like a triple pack or duo pack and basically you know the insides of the case they would always kind of have a distinctive look to them you know they didn't have the memory card slot at the top usually the playstation logo would be at the top because it was a dedicated playstation set case and it was usually a bit cheaper for them to push these out which means they were doing things to cut costs such as not including the manual which 
is really disappointing. I'm honestly kind of debating on buying another copy of the game or maybe just, you know, picking up a manual for the game so that I can at least have it since, you know, this is one of my favorite games and platformers of all time. But the set that this game came in was actually a triple pack. And the other two games, uh, you know, this game was a platformer, but the other ones, not so much. So the first one was Crash Nitro Kart. And, you know, we're not going to go into the whole complete in box experience here. I'll at least show it off to you guys so you guys can see it. This was kind of like the spiritual successor to Crash Team Racing, I'll say. It's a really fun game. It's basically like Mario Kart inside of the Crash universe. It's amazing. It honestly feels a lot like Crash Team Racing. The physics are a little different, but for the most part, it has quite a striking resemblance to it. And then this one, Crash Tag Team Racing. This one is uh, very controversial to say the least. People didn't seem to enjoy this one as much. I was a kid when I played it, so you know, all the fart jokes and burp jokes on the main menu made me laugh. And I always thought the concept of this game was cool. You know, you could like clash and combine with cars. You know, you could be racing as Crash and then combine with Cortex. And before you know it, you could be driving the car and Cortex could be on the back on a turret, like literally shooting the other racers. Or you guys could switch and then Crash could hop on the turret. He could be shooting and you know, you could be aiming and shooting at the other racers while the computer is driving for you. It was honestly a really cool concept. Sure, the execution was a little flawed and you know, there was like this whole overworld system with these mini games. And you know, I feel like if they really just would have honed in and truly put all of their budget and time into refining the racing mechanics and physics, then this game may have been remembered, you know, in a bit of a better light. But considering the fact that, you know, there's, there's some rather immature humor in the game, which again, as a kid, I didn't mind. However, some people aren't into that kind of humor, which, you know, I, I can respect considering the fact that this, you know, franchise never really relied on humor like that in the first place. So I can, you know, at least kind of understand the criticism. And furthermore, while the mini games in the overworld and platforming sessions were a nice inclusion, uh, they definitely weren't necessarily necessary. I mean, I, I, I feel like it's kind of cool to have that dynamic in the game. You know, it's part platformer, part racer, part mini game collection, but you know, not everybody was jobbing that with that and they, were, they just wanted to focus solely on the racing. So again, I can kind of respect that perspective of the game. If you couldn't tell, I have a lot of nostalgia for these games and it's, uh, I, I, I'm never going to say anything negative about any of them. <laughs> I love all of these games quite dearly, especially Crash Twin Insanity. A lot of nostalgia and a lot of memories with this one. But now I want to hear from you guys. Did you guys ever play Crash Twin Sanity? What are your thoughts on the game? Do you also think that it's pretty underrated? Just personally, if I'm going to be honest, I think Crash Twin Sanity is the most underrated Crash game in the entire series. Whatever you're thinking, I'd love to hear from you guys. But anyway, as always, a shout out to the patrons and channel members, Carmen's Figure, Grandma, Lubity Tab, Big Daddy, Maddie, Chalupa, Source, Rex, Ray, Zach, Polar, Ray, DeWebster, Lamas, Bianca, Spirit, Torch, Croissant, Mellow, Last King, Community, Magic, Mason, Irving, DJY, 15, Flame, 71, Aaron Reynolds, and Unknown. Thank you guys for watching. Have an amazing day. Stay beautiful. I love you all. And remember, don't go hollow. Peace.